So now let's take a closer look at modulation and the envelope and LFO tabs. I'm going to explain what they are and what they do, as well as demonstrate them in use. First, let's take a look at the interface. Each have their own tab, and the number tabs down the side select which envelope or LFO is currently displayed ready for editing. The envelopes and LFOs are by default independent for each track, but they can be linked to other tracks. To do that, click on the link symbol next to the tab name. This will link the settings to any lanes and generators that also have the link status set to link. Note that this isn't a paste function though, changes aren't regressive and will only be reflected in the other while link states are set and changes made. Envelopes are one shot type composed of the usual attack, hold, decay, sustain and release phases. The time values are displayed beneath the graphic and can be adjusted here or the nodes in the graphic can be click and dragged as required. The shape of the curves between the nodes can also be edited by click dragging on the envelope and dragging up or down. Alternatively, left click and drag the curves text display at the bottom or use direct entry figures by double clicking. The LFOs are based on waveforms. As well as many traditional waveform types, there are also sample and hold types which, as you can see, is a stepped type of waveform that holds at various points. The LFOs are adjustable for rate, depth, phase and attack. I've mentioned the envelopes and LFOs several times and how they can be used to modulate various parameters and we've taken a brief look at those controls. But for the rest of this section, let's take a much closer look at what is meant by all of those terms and how they work. Both envelopes and LFOs can change parameters over time. An envelope is a one-shot change that has a start, middle and end, whereas an LFO repeats over and over. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator and as the name suggests, oscillates or changes at quite a low speed or frequency, typically slower than 20 times per second. Neither envelopes or LFOs add anything to the sound, they are simply used as a way to control a parameter perhaps on a synth or any other control. I'm going to use the distortion filter and the amount parameter to explain them and also how to apply a modulator to a control. Let's take a look at the envelopes first. All four have identical controls. I'm going to use envelope four, which I will assign to the gain control of one of the distortion filters set to hard to type. But first, Let's hear the basic sound so we can hear and see how the sound is affected. For the purposes of this demonstration I have a simple sine wave type sound and we can hear how that sounds by clicking the preview button. Now I'll add the hard distortion set to about 70% and you can hear how that affects the sound. Next I'll assign envelope 4 to the amount control and set the range from starting at zero and ending at about 70%. If I preview that, you'll hear that nothing much seems to have changed. That's because of the current envelope settings. Currently it jumps to maximum and then returns quickly back to zero. Let's take a closer look at the envelope parameters and terms and see what they mean. I've already mentioned attack, hold, decay, sustain and release phases. So let's see how they work and combine to produce the envelope. The attack phase is how quickly the parameter reaches its end setting. In this case, how long it takes to reach 70%. Currently, it's at zero and therefore it's almost instantly. Let's increase the attack and hear how that changes things. The settings are in milliseconds, so a setting somewhere close to 1000 milliseconds is one second. Now let's hear how the amount control now increases much more slowly. Once the attack phase has done its job of increasing the parameter to its end value, the hold phase takes over, and unsurprisingly, this is how long the control is held at the end value. To demonstrate this properly, I need to reduce the decay sustain phase to zero. I'll explain that phase next. 
First, I'll set the hold phase to a very short time. Again, listen as the amount parameter reaches its maximum setting and then very quickly returns to the start point. Now if I increase the hold time and preview that again, you'll notice that the maximum value is now held for much longer before returning to its start setting. That's the hold phase. Next comes the decay and sustain phases. Decay is adjustable for time and sustain controls the level to which it decays. Let's increase the sustain setting while maintaining a fairly fast decay time. Sustain is the level to which the parameter will go at the end of the hold phase. Decay is how long it takes to reach that level. Previously, this was the start point, but now as you can hear, it's about halfway between the start and end settings. Notice that it moves to the sustain level fairly quickly. The sustain level is held until I release the preview button. Now I'll increase the decay time and preview that. Notice that it moves to the sustain level much more slowly. Finally, the release parameter is how long it takes for the sound to change from the sustain level to the start level once the preview button is released. In addition to these controls, the envelope can also have its shape changed by click dragging up or down on the line joining the various phase nodes. This affects at what rate the changes between the phase nodes happen. For example, if I set the hold to decay at a fast curve, the change from end to sustain level is quite sudden. If I change the shape of the curve, the transition between the two moves at a slower rate initially. Notice that I've referred to the values as start and end points rather than minimum and maximum. The reason for this is that the start point can just as easily be higher than the end point. Right click over the parameter and select flip range from the context menu. Now the envelope is still followed, but it starts at the higher setting and moves to the lower settings as the start and end points have been swapped. As you can see, using all of these controls allows great control over parameters. Now let's look at the LFOs. I've assigned LFO4 to the same parameter as the envelope demonstration. The LFO follows the shape of the selected waveform and I'll start with a basic sine wave. Here, how on the basic settings, the parameter sweeps up and down the set range following the sine wave shape at the rate, depth, phase and attack settings. One complete sweep of the waveform is referred to as one cycle. Now let's see how the parameters affect the way the LFO works. Rate is the time taken to complete one cycle. Increasing this figure sweeps the range quicker, reducing it slows it down. Depth is how far towards the end of the LFO's range it goes before returning to the starting point. At 1 it sweeps the whole range. At 0.5, it only sweeps halfway to the end time. Phase is whereabouts in the LFO cycle it starts. Changes here are reflected in the waveform display. Using this parameter, it's possible to start at any point of the cycle. Attack is the amount of time the LFO takes to reach its full depth. There are three options across to the right. Sync changes the rate value to a musical division, such as quarters or whole notes, that syncs with the tempo set in Break Tweaker. Restart forces the waveform cycle to start at the beginning each time a note is played. Invert simply turns the waveform upside down. Most of the parameters can be modulated by two sources. How the sources work together depends on what is selected. If it's two envelopes, the envelope with the maximum value at any set point has precedence and overrides the other envelope. If it's an envelope and LFO, the envelope controls the amplitude or level of the LFO. 
If it's two LFOs, they are added together which results in greater modulation at any one point. Now we've looked at the generators, their controls and how they work, let's take a look at the sequencer itself. 